Hey, everybody. How's it going? So I'm not always able to share everything I'm doing when I'm lobbying for right to repair. And I wanted to explain why that is. And then I also wanted to explain a new development and what my thoughts were and try to get some of your feedback. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, that I wanted to use as an example that a certain company was screwing over peanut farmers and show how that hurts people that enjoy peanuts or eat peanuts. It hurts the peanut farmer. It hurts everybody else. If I were to make a document that detailed all of this and share it ahead of time, the company may be able to temporarily just undo all the things that they're doing that I'm talking about in that document. Maybe they'll go over to each of those individual peanut farms and say, we will fix all of your equipment for free for the next two years, and we'll give somebody in this town, I don't know, a free peanut farm. They'll be able to come up with some PR stunt that allows it to make it look like that nobody needs to do anything, everything's just fine. And then the moment that everything dies down, they'll go back to normal. So I can't always share everything that I'm going to do with you because it would allow the opposition to get ahead of me and cut me off at the pass and then go back to status quo as normal if I tell you everything that we're doing. But there are certain things I wanted to share with you. And one of them was a compromise that, in my opinion, is a poison pill. I wanted to explain why I see it as a poison pill, but I also wanted to get feedback from all of you because you guys really were the ones that raised the money that allowed me to be able to do any of this in the first place. So before I even get into that, I wanted to talk about what I see as right to repair. Right to repair is making parts, schematics, diagrams, manuals, etc. available for sale to people that wish to purchase them, not just repair shops. There is a common anti-right to repair talking point, and it will show up on Mac rumors, it'll show up in r slash Apple, it'll show up where people hate me, where they'll, where instead of engaging with the arguments that I have, they'll say, F this guy, he does not care about you, he only cares about his business, he is not out there to help you, none of this helps you. And usually what I will respond with is, if you take a look, every single bill that I've ever testified in favor of and every single bill that I have pushed forward has been a bill that makes parts, schematics, diagrams available to you the same way they're available to me. I don't believe in a right to repair that requires that you be a business in order to get access to things. I don't think that's fair. When you go to my channel and you go to playlist and MacBook component level board repairs, it doesn't ask you if you are a repair shop before you get to watch those videos. When you go to repair.wiki, you do not have to provide proof that you are a business in order to get access to the troubleshooting guides. It's available to everyone, and that's always what I intended. The reason I intended it this way is because A, most people that get into this business don't start as businesses. They start as people that were screwing around in their kitchen table, working on fixing stuff. And the way you work on fixing things before you become a business is having access to parts, schematics, manuals, tools, and screens and everything else. So if you require that you be a business to get it, you kind of cut off the first rung, which is where I started. But also fundamentally, it just doesn't seem fair that I ask for something to be made available to me if it's not made available to you. So I've always responded to this by saying every bill that I've testified in favor of has been a bill that makes the same things available to you as to me. So it's not something that would simply benefit me. Anything I ask for, I make available to all. And one of the compromises that was proposed is something that I see as a poison pill. I'm not going to say the state, I'm not going to say the company, I'm not going to say the legislators because I don't want to get, I, I don't want uh, my opposition getting ahead of me here. But one of those compromises was make the parts available, make these things available only to businesses, only to select businesses that they choose, only to select businesses that they choose based on their perceived ability to do the work and their financial standing, meaning, uh, and this is something that I'm not particularly a fan of, and I want to explain why. I started out in this business with $268. I'm confident that nobody, no company in their right mind would have looked at my bank statements and said, if they're looking at financial standing, give stuff to this man, because I was completely broke and destitute. And one of the things I love about this business is that it allows you to have a low barrier to entry. It, again, it's not like starting a restaurant where you may need $50,000. It is not like starting many, you know, it's not like uh, opening a hotel where you need to be able to afford to buy a building. It, it was a really low barrier to entry, which means that the, this industry is a great path out of poverty if you have ingenuity and you're willing to do hard work. That's one of the reasons that I'm so passionate about this industry, that's so passionate about this business, because you really can go from being completely destitute and broke to financially secure. You can spend a few hours messing around on your own spare time after you're done with your crappy minimum wage job, and in a few months, maybe have a skill set that you can use to make an honest, real living for yourself that makes people happy. I don't want to get rid of that. Now, one of the things that often happens is when a compromise is proposed 
and it's shot down, you may hear things like this, and I just want to prepare you for it, which is, we tried, but those damn right to repair people are so unreasonable. I'm, a, I'm opposed to this because I want what's made available to me to be made available to you. So this, to me, in my opinion, is an unacceptable compromise and one that I do not want to, uh, to be a part of in any way, shape, or form. Further, it would give a win to my opposition. When you read those posts on Mac rumors from people that will straw man whatever I say on this channel, or when you read posts on r slash Apple from people that, will just, that just completely and utterly hate me, that will say things like, this is not to help you. This will never help you. This is only to help him, that selfish business owner. If I were to co-sign or co-sponsor a right to repair bill that only made parts, schematics, diagrams, etc. available for sale to businesses, not to end users, I would actually be making them correct. And what that does is that fuels a counterculture movement uh, against it. So often, with the way the world works, as Jessa tells me, and I kind of agree with her, is at the end of the day, people will listen to what you have to say for 30 seconds, and they'll just kind of get an impression of who you are as a person. And they'll either choose to lean in because they like you, or they'll choose to do this because they don't. Whether they like you or not, honestly, it really does shape a lot of people's views. So if they like you, they'll lean in, they'll listen to what you have to say, they'll consider it. If they don't like you, they'll do this. And when people do this, they will start looking for reasons to reinforce what they their first impression. So if my first impression is I don't like you, I'm going to come up with reasons to reinforce that. And some of them may be, um, well, he has a business, so he must only be caught, he only cares about himself. He doesn't care about anybody else. And that's a common one for people that hate me as a human being that do the this rather than the this, the leaning in. It is, uh, I, I want to look for any reason to discredit this as humanly possible. And one that could catch on with people is he only cares about himself, nobody else, don't listen to him. If I were to co-sponsor a right to repair bill that only makes parts, schematics, diagrams, anything else available to repair shops, particularly repair shops with good financial standing, Honestly, even I'd be throwing stones at myself. It makes It's really difficult at that point to believe that anything that we're doing is being done in good faith, and I think that we would lose a lot of the momentum that we have as a movement. I think we lose a lot of support from the general public. And support from the general public, in my opinion, is what is necessary to actually get something like this done. Now, even if there was a right to repair that only made things available to uh, repair shops that have a certain amount of money that, quote, have the ability to do it properly, that still would be better than nothing at all. That's still a step forward. Like, if my repair shop in 2021 can buy a CD3217 or an ISL 9240 without having to jump through insane hoops, that would be beautiful. That would help me. Uh, but at the end of the day, it would hurt the movement more than it would actually help me, and I don't think anything would actually get passed. Above all, you bet your ass that none of these companies would actually approve of my company to begin with. Because this type of compromise means the company believes you're competent and the company believes you have enough money. So you bet that that standard would be written in a way that writes me out anyway. So I don't believe that that compromise would actually even benefit me. Even if it got passed, it wouldn't benefit me. And it most certainly wouldn't benefit you if you're a user. I believe in asking for what I'm willing to make available. I'm willing to make all the information and everything that I tell you on how to do my job available, openly available to anybody not just gate kept to a certain group of people, and I don't want to gatekeep any of this. And I don't want to support a bill that gatekeeps any of this behind uh, you know, the doors of who the manufacturer says uh, can have access. I honestly think that that's just a, a bill that reinforces the concept of manufacturer authorized repair, and I'm not for it. But I'm curious what you think. Do you think that I'm going overboard? Do you think that I should accept this type of compromise? Or do you think that having this line in the sand where I say, no, this is a poison pill, is the right thing to do? I'm very curious what you all think, and also want to say thank you because, again, you're the reason that this is even possible. You're the reason that I have money to hire lobbyists in any of these states, that I have money to give to other nonprofits that are helping to build coalitions around right to repair. None of this would have been possible without all of you. Even those of you who gave 50 cents, if you gave 25 cents, if you gave a penny, thank you very, very much for allowing this 501c4 Repair Preservation Group Action Fund to do what it does and to help push this concept forward. I really appreciate it. And I hope to be able to do a, a lot of amazing stuff into the future. And I hope to be able to turn this into a force that cannot be easily whack a mole It's very easy to whack a mole when you have, uh, when you're building coalitions uh, from people that really are just doing this, you know, in their own free time, that 
cannot lobby, that cannot show up at a state house. When you have a full time presence in many states, it makes it really difficult to be able to whack a mole the way it was before. And the reason I'm able to do that is because of all of you. Uh, so again, just thank you. I just you know, it sounds cheesy that I keep repeating it, but I really do appreciate it. As does Oreo. By the way, usually Mr. Clinton sits up here, but today Oreo got up here. Look at him. He's my Oreo. This is my Oreo cat. He loves me. And this little Oreo. Isn't he cute? He isn't he cute? That's right. I know you wouldn't compromise Oreo. I'm going to be as uncompromising as you are when you cry for food. All right. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.